How's it going, YouTube? My name's Elvin Ninja 7, your resident Miss Weaver Monk, and guys, we finally downed Mythic Fyrag, getting our guild cutting edge, and I believe this is my fourth or fifth cutting edge in a row at this point, and I swear every single one, it seems like it gets harder and harder. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to be going over today, is just my Mythic Fyrag kill. It's going to be a super chilled video. I don't think I'm going to like play by play it, but um, I do want to show that this was the pool right before our guild killed it. It was like only our fifth time, I believe, seeing P3, and we made it pretty deep. We made it sub 12%, and um, I do just want to show just how much I was cranking this pool um, and how much mana I had left over. I think this was my best pool. Very unfortunate that we wiped here, but just about a minute and a half later, we um, go again, and yeah, let's go back to the pool. And nothing really changed in how I approached this fight. But I will say that this night that we killed it, we kind of all felt it was going to die. Like we had gotten to P3 a couple times before this, but we were like, tonight's the night. And I feel like everyone was kind of on their A game, which is always very important on these cutting edge kills. Um, you have to be. There's, there's no way around it. These kills or these bosses are designed to where one mistake by one person can wipe the entire raid. So my guild absolutely clutched it. Um, now we're gonna start it, and you see here I'm doing the same manatee start where I do a Renewing Mist, chug my manatee for the whole 15 second duration, so we get down to about five seconds, and then I start my first ramp. Same as in my last video, if you haven't seen, I made like a guide video for this Mistweaver play style, going over the uh, the new talent peer in the piece that absolutely has hard carried my throughput um, for the last like two weeks or however long it's been out. Um, and I will crank up the volume as we get closer to the end so you can hear some of the calls. But um, all in all, P1 and P2, we kind of were just on autopilot here, not like myself, but like the, the raid. We kind of knew what to do, just executed the plan. But myself personally, I knew coming from that last pool where my mana looked so good coming into P3 and even at, like toward the end of P3, I knew that I didn't have to go above and beyond in these first two phases. You see there, it got a little close, a little scary, but um, my revival barely got off in time. Yeah, I, I knew I didn't have to go crazy just dumping all my mana, pumping as much healing in P1 and 2. Um, and yeah, I knew that I didn't have to do that, so I was kind of playing a little bit more reserved with my mana in this pool and, and in a couple of the last pools. But you see there, that little shift, shift where you have to kind of like move across the battlefield. Um, a lot of Mistweavers have the Evoker buff that allows you to move while you're casting during that. I don't. So, um, oh, something funny just happened there, but um, I, I didn't. So I, I always was having to like stop cast Enveloping Mist, stop cast Enveloping Mist. So it was really weird that part, but um, I knew that it was better for our Disc Priest to have it than myself. Um, and you see there, this was like the only pool where I was like this low on the meter. So I don't know, something about this pool, I was like, do you guys ever get it where your worst pool of the night, you just like know it's gonna be the kill? Like every time that you die on a boss, you're like, this this has gotta be the one, right? That was kind of how I was feeling. But you see there, I'll go back 10 seconds. We even messed up the drops. You see, I kind of get this middle spot and there's not enough space in between these two little circles uh, so my drop actually was bad. I mean, there's no way I don't think that I could save that, but we actually spawned an extra, extra swirly. And I think our raid lead was like, uh, just, just go with it. Um, but yeah, still very similar play to, um, my, my last video. I didn't really change much. I kind of ramp in the same spots. You see there, I do those quick sips of manatee because, um, especially now it's very important to be on top of your mana because peer into peace can shock you just how much mana you can blow through in an instant. Um, so I'll do those short bursts of manatee every time before I start uh, Soothing Mist Channel because the first few casts that you do in a Soothing Mist Channel are gonna be your most expensive ones because they're not uh, cost reduced by Cloud of Focus. But as you pump into the same person um, until you get those Cloud of Focus stacks built up, then um, that's when it starts becoming mana efficient. But for the first few casts in a, in a Soothing Mist, it's very mana inefficient especially if you're swapping targets. So that's why I try to start most, if not all, uh, Soothing Mist channels with a Manatee buff. And you see here, I'm already, I'm kind of doing a little bit more healing, but usually on pools, about this point, I would just be drinking Manatee. So I'm very behind on my Manatee. I don't know why I felt the need to just get everyone to full health. 
But you see here, we're coming into the intermission, and as soon as we kind of got this down, um, it really made this boss a lot easier. But this was a huge strain on our guild for a while. It definitely took up like multiple raid nights, but I am the backup, so I am just on this side watching for any dark orbs, but I'm trying to make sure that I'm shielded by a, a, a fire orb person. That's why I'm kind of like, I'm looking at this fire orb person the right to my right of myself, um, just to make sure that they won't let a fire orb slip through and hit me, because that's, that's what would kill me. But I was just making sure no shadow orbs made it through. I'm um, in here doing a long sip of manatee, just because it's like absolute downtime. And then we start the ramp. Now, I will say um, a lot of people are going to be kind of unimpressed by this kill, if they've, especially if they've killed it already on their own, because these adds, as well as a couple other parts of the fight, have gotten nerfed uh, in the past like week. So the, the big tree ad was very tough to heal. I mean, honestly, it was really tough to heal when you get three of them at the same time. You have to, There's one point in the fight where you have to heal three of those big guys all at the same time. But that's our job as Mistweaver, or at least my job in my raid, is I was designated to single target heal these trees. Literally, anything else can happen in the fight. As long as I get that guy healed up, um, they would be happy with my my job on this fight. So it definitely, the nerf definitely made this a lot easier. But I was kind of getting to the point where I was getting it down. I was really good at healing those guys. So, um, yeah, once again, I am just watching for these tree ads, just topping them up. You see there, our, our Shadow Priest actually uses their health swap with the that tree, so it made it really easy to heal. So I decide to just come in and do a little bit of damage to this Dark Colossus because it had been causing a couple wipes um, and also just preserving some mana using a Chi Burst. You'll see me use Chi Burst quite often just for heal, um, like mana preservation. Here on these ads, I normally was seedling, like I would I would pop my seedling trinket before these guys spawned, but you see there it was down for like two more seconds because I used it late on the intermission. So I kind of just go into healing mode. I'm like, it's not up, let's just start healing. And then you see there I pop trink I pop the trinket anyways, but it's a little late. It doesn't really get good value. But um I think that is kind of a big thing that contributes to my healing being a lot lower than normal, is my timers were pretty off from the early phases. And that's one thing that I try to, I, like I really hammer in whenever I do my coaching sessions is um, I look at the timings of their ramps, not just their, their like the big ones, but I look at when they're timing their first ramp because it really does uh, set up your other ramps. And um, same goes for like any cooldown, like seedlings. You see there, I did have to use Life Cocoon, which the plan here is to life cocoon one of these three trees. So already I know I'm gonna have to be on my game to get all three of these trees healed up. So you see there, I pop Shaylunes, I rip Yulon, I put Renewing Mist on one of the trees and then Enveloping Mist, Enveloping Mist on the other, on two of the trees and then start cranking into the third one. So Yulon is carrying the healing and you see there, I barely get the third one healed up. So, I mean, we can go back because it, it got pretty close. Uh, so we pop, Shaylunes, cast Yulon, get Enveloping Mist, Enveloping Mist, and then I just start cranking into the third one. Um, and then once that one's fully healed, you see me swap to another one. I put a, I don't even put a Renewing Mist. I'm like, I'm kind of panicking if I'm being honest. But yeah, all three of them barely got healed up. Um, that would have definitely wiped us if, if all three of them hadn't gotten healed. Uh, but I pop Revival and we're about to come into P3 because that's kind of like the main, the big thing that happens and we do have one i think one last tree to heal i don't even know it's a blur if i'm being totally honest but the, yeah one tree is nothing to heal um after healing three i i'm noticing now watching back our mana is obviously just way worse off than on our previous pool but um at this point we it was just such it was kind of a scuffed pool like we messed up mechanics the drops uh the trees but i'm just like we we got this so i use my transcendence transfer the tp down um, so that I can start cranking Vivifies into myself. This is very mana efficient for multiple reasons. So you see there, I, I Transcendence transferred and the talent Escape from Reality means that now you're going to be refunded back a full Vivifies half cost. So basically, I think Vivify costs 8,500 mana. So every time you Vivify into yourself for the next 10 seconds, you're going to get 4,500 mana back refunded. 
the the way that it works is actually kind of quirky because you're still spending the mana you're just getting half of a full vivifies worth so since i'm cloud of focus buffed like basically reducing that mana cost by 40 percent now i'm spending 60 percent of a mana of a vivifies worth of mana into myself to get 50 percent back so yes i'm still losing 10 percent of a viv vivifies worth of mana but uh, since I, I drank a few stacks of my mana tea before doing all this, so let's go back. So you see me here as the boss shoots up into the sky. We're waiting. I am going to drink mana tea to reduce the cost of my vivifies. And then on top of that mana tea reduction, you're also stacking the cloud of focus. So now I'm netting mana every time I vivify into myself since my cloud of focus is fully stacked. And then on top of that, since I'm spending mana, we're also gaining mana T stack. So it's just a very mana efficient way to spend your downtime. You see here, yeah, health bars are low, but since I had seen this part of the phase a couple times, I kind of knew that I had a few seconds to sit on my um, Shaloons into Chiji, or into Yulon, and it wasn't that life-threatening. So I'm spamming Vivifies to hope that, yes, it's, it's less efficient now, but it's more efficient in the long run. And in, in like five minutes from now, I'll, I'll thank myself because I have mana to work with. Now we're moving into P3. Like I said, we had only seen this phase a handful of times, probably five or six. Um, the things that I had learned from the last pool was um, to just absolutely protect the seed carriers, which that, yes, that is pretty fight specific to Firek, but it's a lesson in um in all of healing honestly if you're on a fight and there are mechanics mechanics trump parsing 100 percent if you have the option to get like one big fat yulon to just heal everyone in the group um and just like sit there and, and pump healing into full health bars um and maybe some people are 80 percent health but one person who has the dot on them is rotting away absolutely cancel your channel and heal that person like every time and that's kind of the philosophy that i am taking on this boss you see here i actually get the fire swirly mechanic and i made it a point to save every bit of mobility that i had for that fire swirly if i got marked i'd run to the absolute edge of the platform and that's exactly what i did to get that thing all the way to the end um, you see there, I get a nice, okay Yulon ramp off before this apocalyptic roar. It wasn't as efficient. As I was saying, I prioritized the mechanics over getting an absolutely efficient ramp. But um, yeah, at this point, guys, I will be totally honest. At this point in the fight, 15%, we had only seen this health percentage once. And um, I don't know, making it here twice in a row my heart was pounding my heart was absolutely pounding this this whole rest of the pool was an absolute blur and you're going to see a lot of mistakes a lot of suboptimal play um like that ramp for example my heart was so pounding i was thinking about my heart that i kind of just forgot that i was in the middle of a ramp um so just things like that you're going to see that but that's why i share this with you is i'm not showing you my best pools this obviously this is my only fire rack kill but I'm glad that this was my worst pull of the night because I think there's more to learn from it. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So yeah, we're coming into the last 15%. I made sure um, on my mind, I was like, I have to get an ear at all off. It's my weapon. It only works when they're in execute range of like 30%. Also here, I'm glad I remembered where to go because since I have roll and mobility, I kind of led the charge and you can tell that one person kind of changed their direction because of where everyone else was going. Um, here, I'm kind of panicking. I rip a six stack Shaloons with no, no other cooldown to follow it up. Um, I am just trying to heal the seed carriers. Like, literally, the only cast that I'm doing are going to be in the seed carriers for now. Um, you see here, the big damage just happened. I, I'm like, okay, I just, I literally at this moment, I checked the boss's health, saw 6%. I was like, oh my God, we're doing this. So I'm I'm not even thinking about Yulon. That would have been the perfect time to Yulon. Like, right after we moved to the middle here, I should have popped Yulon now and just gone, like gone crazy, just healed wh whatever health bars I can and um, just let my DPS do the last 6%. But my mind was so blank that I totally forgot to hit L Yulon for like 10 seconds. Right now, I should have ripped it. Look at those health bars. That is prime Yulon real estate. You'll see here, I'm just drinking mana tea. I don't need mana, but I'm like so focused on the things that I've kind of taught myself over the past few pools. Uh, but now you see I'm finally going into a Yulon. 
we, we're going to ramp, but we won't even capitalize on the peak of that ramp because I'm just too focused on healing the seed carriers. Uh, you're going to see there, I ju jumped over to Shamrock. Gumbo, I know, is a seed carrier, and I know he is the riskiest one because he is solo soaking. So as soon as he dropped lo low, my first instinct was to life cocoon, and boom, there's the kill. I'll play it back, but with audio, so you guys can hear. Um, my raid lead, shout out to him. He always keeps us cool, and I think he even died to something. Um, but he, I think he died for the greater good here, Scotty. So let's listen. <sighs> Firestorms just get up. Just keep the seeds alive. Just keep the seed players alive. Just the seed players alive. Nobody else alive. Hell yeah. Okay, so one one cool thing that my raid leader actually suggested we do before this, like before this raid night, was we actually went into heroic fire rack and got to P3 and then just stopped all DPS and just walked through it a few times. And that absolutely helped because you can kind of make it to where it sequences pretty similarly. And yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I did want to make this video to kind of close out this tier because um, I'm still going to make a few videos before next expansion comes out or next um, next season starts, season four. But I just wanted to say one thing at the end of this video, especially if you're still watching this video in particular. This was my first um, season since starting YouTube full time. And I mean, it, it's it's an absolute dream come true. And I hope that this is the first of many seasons going forward. But I, I just have to thank you guys so much for all the support that you've shown me this season and um, we wouldn't have sur survived this roster apocalypse without you guys. A lot of you guys actually jumped in and some of you were in my raid at the end. So very cool stuff. And, and I just have y'all to thank. So thank you one for all that and all the support, but also to the support of the YouTube channel. I mean, you guys are, are literally helping me live my dream. And I just I thank you guys so much. And I don't just look back at this season and think, wow, that was great. I'm glad that happened. The way that I'm, I'm moving forward is I'm, I'm taking everything that I learned and thinking, how can I be better? And I think like rating is a cool little like analogy to how I'm approaching YouTube because I am always looking to get better at rating, at healing, at, at being a better player in the game. But I guarantee you I'm also equally looking for that same, I have that same drive in YouTube and I want to make the best content for you guys and for myself. I, I am happy when a video comes out good because I'm proud of it. And um, lately I have been proud of my videos a lot more because you guys show so much support and have taught me. You guys tell me what you like to see and I, I really appreciate that. And I'm really excited about season four. Um, I don't know if my guild's going to be raiding to bring it back to raiding, but myself, I'm going to be making a lot of content and I'm excited for it. And I think you will enjoy it. Uh, but guys, that's going to do it for the fire rat kill. Once again, shout out to everyone in my guild. They were amazing, especially the leaders because they um, beat the roster boss as well as, as all, all nine of the bosses in this uh, raid. But yeah, thank you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you guys thought. Have you gotten the mythic kill yet? Or are all still pushing, trying to get in these last few weeks? I'll tell you, this was the latest we've killed a boss um, for sure um, out of all the cutting edges that this guild's gotten. But thank you guys so much. A special shout out to the patrons of this channel. Um, everything that I just said, but um, once again, because you guys are, are carrying this channel and carrying my dream, my childhood dream of being a YouTuber. So I just a huge thank you to you guys. Uh, but guys, that's going to do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.